When one man marries two women in the same house, there's going to be lots of trouble. <laughs> Abraham and Sarah could not have a baby. Sarah said, why don't you go over and have a baby with Hagar, the Egyptian maid? Abraham said, it sounds like the will of God to me. And off he went. The Egyptian maid conceived Ishmael. He had 12 sons and they became the Arabian nation, the Arab nation. And in time evolved to have a theology of Allah and Islam. On the other side was the Jewish people. And out of the Jewish people came the 12 tribes and the faith known as Judeo-Christianity. This is a clash between two great positions of faith that will not be resolved until God himself resolves it. I assure you that we as a people must come to the position that we must be willing to defend our life as Americans against those who are committed to destroying us. What we're seeing in the Middle East today is a 6,000-year-old, a 4,000-year-old family feud that will eventually lead to the Battle of Armageddon. That's a long process, but all of that is explained in the book Jerusalem Countdown. Why were we attacked on 9-11? Better still to use the phrase of the academics, why do they hate us? Let me tell you, it's not because of our support of Israel. Only someone dumb enough to buy the New York Times would believe that. They hate us because it's their religious duty to hate us. They hate us because they're trained from the breast of their mother to hate us. Radical Islam is a doctrine of death. It is their desire. It is their hope. It is their ambition. It is their highest honor to die in a war against infidels. And you, and you, and you, and you are an infidel. There's nothing that you can do or say or give to accommodate them. They simply hate you because of who you are. And their only way to guarantee that they get to heaven is die killing you. That's what makes them so dangerous. Radical Islam teaches their children in elementary school to love death like your children love life. That seems almost unthinkable to the Western mind. But I assure you that's the kind of enemy we're up against. They hate us because we're free. Radical Islam hates freedom. They want to turn the clock back to the 7th century and to the Dark Ages. Women can't be free to drive a car. Now that may be true in some of the cases, but in their society no one can drive a car. They can't go to school. Women cannot have a job in this culture. The man must be able to punish his wife at will. He may be able to Maybe he should be able to divorce her by simply saying three times, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, and turn her out on the street penniless. That's the life of a woman in the Islamic faith. Islamofascism calls Jews descendants from apes and pigs. They call Christians, quote, those who incur Allah's wrath and must be killed if they will not convert. Think about that. Fox News lost two of their reporters to this loving group of religious radicals who put a gun to their head trying to get them to convert. Now, I know the Romans road can be aggressive, but it's nothing like a Smith and Wesson under your ear saying join our church or die. Islamofascism cannot survive in an atmosphere of freedom. What woman in her right mind would want to be a slave for life? What mother could choose to strap a bomb on her baby and cheer while her child blows their bodies to smithereens? Who in their right mind would choose a religion dedicated to burning down churches, to bombing buildings and airplanes and killing people in the name of God? No one. That's why we are in Iraq as a people. We are not there just fighting Iraq. We are fighting the Islamic fascist of the world. We're fighting Iran. We're fighting Saudi Arabia. We're fighting Syria. Why? Because, listen very closely, if freedom survives in Iraq, radical Islam is finished in the Middle East, and they know it. Therefore, they cannot afford to lose that battle. The problem is that cowardly American politicians who want to cut and run from Iran, no way. This war must be won now. 
or we're going to fight it in the streets of New York, Los Angeles, Detroit, Houston, and Miami. There is one word, victory, and victory now. I'm proud of our brave troops in Iraq. I'm proud of President Bush, who has the courage to stay the course. I'm proud of America for being bold enough and brave enough to carry the torch of freedom into the darkest continent of the world and give those people a fair chance at life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I'm a lover of Winston Churchill. Let America heed the words of Winston Churchill. He said, in the darkest days of World War II, when it looked like Adolf Hitler was going to win, when people like Joe Kennedy, the father of Ted Kennedy, was saying, Hitler would be good for Europe. Churchill said, you ask what is our aim? I can answer with one word, victory. Victory at all cost. Victory in spite of all terror. Victory, however long and hard the road may be, for without victory, there is no survival." End of quote. Churchill nailed it on the head. Without victory, there is no survival. When we lost the war in Korea, it did not affect your life. When we lost the war in Vietnam, it did not affect your life. But I assure you, if we lose the war against Islamofascism, it will change the world as you know it. Isn't the Islamic religion peaceful? I'm asked this on a perpetual basis by both those in the academic community and the press. Let me give you just some simple history. Because as historians say, those who fail to remember the mistakes of the past are doomed to repeat them in the future. So let's walk through their past. When Mohammed died in 632 AD, much of Arabia, having been forced to embrace this new faith by the sword, decided that they were going to defect. In Baptist terms, they were going to backslide. They were going to leave the church. They thought they had the right to leave the church. They were mistaken. They had forgotten the words of Mohammed who passed on from Allah. That's supposed to be their God. Quote, whoever relinquishes his faith, kill him. During the next two years, 630 to 632 A.D., in obedience to Allah's command to behead apostates, apostates is someone who leaves the church, Mohammed's successor and father-in-law, Abu Bakr, with loyal Islamic warriors, slaughtered over 70,000 former Muslims. That's not a peaceful faith. That's not peaceful. Abu Bakr sent forth his troops with this command, and I quote it, quote, command them, those who tried to leave Islam, to re-embrace Islam, but if they refuse, do not spare any of them. Burn them with fire and kill them with force and take the women as your prisoners, end of quote. That's in the Chronicles of Tabaria, book 2, page 258, for those of you who would like to look it up. This is a fact of history. Islam is not peaceful. It is a faith built on terrorism. In Saudi Arabia, the practice of any religion beside Islam, and I'm talking about right now, is strictly prohibited just as it was in the time of Mohammed's lifetime. Saudi Arabia is building mosques in America from coast to coast with riches from America's gas tanks. But try to build a house of worship in Saudi Arabia and see what happens. On July 1977, an Englishman with a miniature cam camera was able to take some photographs that shocked the world. It was the public execution of the Princess Michelle Mohammed and her boyfriend. She was shot six times in the head. He was beheaded. Western governments hurried to suppress the showing of the film. This is not peaceful. Saudi Arabia is the only country that officially beheads people for apostasy. By decree from Mohammed, still honored as Islamic law, 